All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you to Sages for the opportunity and Dr. Goldblatt for moderating. Um, so inguinal hernia repair, when to treat kids like adults. If you've been around for at least for the past couple of days, you've actually witnessed some of the uh, conversations and debates which have been very interesting. Um, next slide. All right, so no disclosures, no financial disclosures. I do have to make a full disclosure with regards to what I do. I am an adult surgeon, MAS trained, spent about six years in Maine where I actually worked on the adolescent population, and I did about two years at Shoalice Hospital before I came and assumed my current role at Stony Brook. So I may be a little bit biased. Uh, adolescents, we're gonna look at what the population is, um, what inguinal hernias uh, repairs are available and what uh, we could do for them. Uh, so the population is basically 12 to 18 years of age. They are a unique population because we're, we're struggling between treating them like pediatric uh, patients versus an adult patient. Uh, but again, you'll see that there's quite a bit of literature out there where both surgical groups are treating them in their own way with good results. There's that. I have not seen any consensus to what the optimal repair is, but again, let's look at the data together and see what's out there and then make a decision for ourselves. So one of the studies that I looked at was, which was the International Hernia Collaborative Group Facebook. When this was done in 2016, there was like 2,000 members, now it's over 7,000. They pulled uh, 64 respondents uh, for four scenarios and they asked them, what would you do for a 16-year-old male with a right-sided inguinal hernia, which was indirect, and what procedure would you select? One of five procedures. And so the scenarios were different in matter of internal ring size, one centimeter versus four, a BMI of 20 or 25, and the adult repairs were the typical open mesh, the lap mesh, and open muscle repair and the pediatric repair, which was the open high ligation or a lap high ligation. So 67% of the surgeons were adults, 33% were pediatric surgeons. And we asked the adult surgeons, how many of you actually do or work on adolescents? It was 81% of the polled respondents. So the first scenario, 60 kilogram male, BMI at 20, one centimeter internal hernia defect, 65% uh, versus 14% with regards to what an adult surgeon would do and they would treat them the adult way, which was the open or lap mesh or muscle repair. And 14% of the pediatric surgeons would do an adult repair, meaning that the, most, the majority of them would actually do a high ligation. Now, if you increase the size of the internal defect, the response was similar almost in agreement, 100 versus 81%, that they would do an adult repair. 67% versus 35% would do lap uh, adult versus pediatric surgeons, and so they were in somewhat of an agreement there, although more of the adult surgeons were comfortable doing the laparoscopic repair. Now the third scenario, BMI 35, so increase in weight, the defect was small, one centimeter, most of the adult surgeons, of course, would do the adult repair. The pediatric surgeons, again, would do their high ligation. The fourth scenario, now you've got the four centimeter defect with a BMI of 35. They're almost about the same. So with regards to the difference of what each specialty would do, it really depended on the size of the patient and their defect size. Now the second paper that I've looked at was a high ligation versus mesh repair. This was looking at adolescents and young adults. There's 213 patients, 70 were, done, or 70 were done by pediatric surgeons and 143 by adult surgeons. And when you look at the whole cohort and the outcomes with high ligation versus mesh, they all reported there was about 20% post-operative pain, 10% numbness and tingling, although it was a little bit increased with the mesh repairs, but it wasn't significant. 10% intermittent bulging, and 6% recurrence rate at about four years, which was similar in both groups. Um, but the recurrence rate was higher with the higher BMIs. With regards to getting back to their ADLs, we found that the mesh group was 
74% were able to do that, 100% were able to do that with the non-mesh. Now, at what age would you actually start moving away from the pediatric option versus the adult surgery? A paper here had looked at it with, with uh, looking at recurrence rate as their outcome at two pediatric centers over a 12-year period. Telephone surveys were conducted, 210 adolescents with open high ligation, and the outcomes were quite similar. So one to four percent recurrence rate, similar to other studies within five years, higher with larger hernia defects, again, similar to what we just seen, and high ligation was effective when anatomically similar, when, when anatomically similar to adults. So there was a low recurrence rate, low incidence of chronic symptoms, but they did recommend that there aren't really any prospective trials out there, and that, that is warranted. The, one of the last papers that we're looking at, pure tissue repair. And you have to look at this because it is an option. Do we have a lot of training in this? We don't. Um, there are two common techniques that are very much discussed in the literature, the shoal lice and the disarta technique, and both were compared actually to the linktestine technique. Um, and we found that the only difference actually was that the disarta was a little bit more faster to do and there was an early return to work. Again, it's telling us that what you do as a general surgeon or a pediatric surgeon has somewhat of a similar outcomes, which means that we do have to look at this a bit closer. Now, I, I did work at the Shoalice Hospital. I saw few adolescents, but in their 75 year experience, their data is not published. They always did a high ligation as young as five years old. They always narrowed the deep ring and selectively reinforced the floor, all right? Two to four lines of lightweight wire, which was stainless steel. And so what do you actually do? You're a general surgeon. You happen to be in, rural, in a rural area of, of the USA. You have adolescents as your population. What is the safest thing to do? You're a pediatric surgeon and you're happy with the high ligation and it looks like we actually have similar results. And so most surgeons will do the procedure they are most comfortable with and experience. That is clear in the literature. We've seen some of the data. The recurrence rates for high ligation and mesh are quite comparable. The long-term outcomes in chronic pain, numbing and recurrence are similar in mesh versus non-mesh. And if you're thinking about fertility, there's an interesting article that just came out out of uh, a fertility clinic in Europe, and they had looked at the, they had looked back at the individuals, male individuals who had hernias in the past, whether they were repaired or not repaired, and they had a similar outcome with regards to their frequency or incidence of fertility. But when they looked at the repaired, the mesh really wasn't that significant with compromising their uh, spermograms. The only difference was that if, their, if, if an orchidopexy was, was, was done, their, they had a poor sperm quality, which was at about 2.4%. So again, hesitant about putting mesh in an adolescent? Well, you should probably think about it and have a discussion. But again, what are the outcomes? It's, it is quite reasonable. So what are the future considerations? Always have this informed discussion with the family. And that really helps set the plane for you. They will always come prepared with questions. Be ready and comfortable to discuss your experience. There really isn't much of a consensus between our societies. And this really should be looked at closely so that we have some sort of a unified response. And then collaborate, don't hesitate to do that. It is so beneficial to reach out to all of these societies and their others and just to bounce ideas off of each other and help augment your ability to take care of this patient population. Thank you very much for your time and for the privilege. <laughs>